Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Shay Ryan Douglas here from Earth Heroes TV. We've got Dr. Espen Jambi from Dr. ETV, and we're super excited to bring you another episode for our conscious media platform and channel where we're going to really unpack, Dr. Espen's going to share around the unified field. As a researcher in quantum physics and neuroscience, he's got such phenomenal depth of knowledge as a peak performance coach and, you know, a yogi, um, particularly looking at the interconnection between the science world and the spiritual world and how they're actually coming together. So I'm really excited to open up this conversation, particularly around the quantum unified field, how we can tap into it, what exactly is it, and also what might be preventing us from actually accessing the flow of this energy. So Dr. E, thanks for joining us and thank you guys for tuning in and listening and watching this video. Please give us a big thumbs up if you love this kind of content. We love sharing it. Dr. Espen's a master in this realm you know, doing um, live events to help people really comprehend this notion um, all across Australia, especially. And um, yeah, thanks for joining me, Dr. E. Thank you so much, Shay, for everything you're doing. It's always a privilege and a pleasure to be with everyone. For those of you watching, thanks for dialing in. I see there's lots of people watching the live, uh, already some comments coming through. So if you are live, uh, drop us a line. Uh, Davinka saying uh, he's good and connects well with people. Well, I'll do my best. Um, today's uh, um, opportunity is to be um, to explore a little bit further as to how we can access the quantum field of divine intelligence. Um, before we go too deep into the esoteric conversation, I'd rather share the, the scientific principles behind this field of, of intelligence that makes up the majority of who you are, um, how to tap into that field how to actually unleash that untapped, uh, trapped, unlock, uh, and uh, a potential and unlock that for personal development, for healing, um, for financial gain, um, for uh, any kind of empowerment that you'd like to, uh, to dive into. So what we're going to do is we're talking about, they talk about the unified field. Um, and in essence, the unified field was the name that the scientists, not the philosophers or the sages or the or the spiritual ones or anything like that, that the, the, the unified field is the scientists name for a field of intelligence that exists within every single person. Now, when I say that, sometimes people go a little bit like, OK, what do you mean by field? Well, firstly, it's important to understand that we are electromagnetic beings. We are like the Earth, an electromagnetic being. The Earth has a North Pole and a South Pole, right? And many of you might have heard of a field called the Taurus field. If you've heard of the Taurus field, then drop us a line in the chat section now. If you're watching the recording later, still pop it in the chat section. Let us know. Uh, I want to check in with you guys. How many of you have heard of the Taurus field? And also, if you've heard of the Taurus field, did you learn that at our events or have you heard about it before? This is really interesting because the Taurus field is actually who and what we are. Um, T-O-R-U-S, also known, known as the toroidal field. Now, the Taurus field is what makes up the majority of who and what we really are. <clears throat> this is interesting to be aware of because most people actually perceive, believe, and therefore achieve in our everyday life that we are physical in nature. We are actually not that um, much physical in nature. There's actually a lot more to us than what we can touch and feel. Um, so firstly, I want to mention the Taurus field for you to go and research because this toroidal field is actually who and what you are. Every part of your body, the cellular structures, they're, they're tiny little Taurus fields within a great Taurus field. The Taurus field can be seen through uh, Carilion photography, it can be studied through many different uh, uh, ways of science. And it also been measured by many, many amazing institutions, such as the HeartMath Institute that has been measuring this for over 30 years. And the HeartMath, <clears throat> excuse me, the HeartMath Institute has actually provided evidence for the fact that this Taurus field within those specific people that have worked on their hearts, on opening their hearts, on facing their fears and letting go of their past, and stepping into the essence of who they are, the, the Heart Math Institute actually found that those people had a heart field because the Taurus field is the electromagnetic field of the heart. Okay? So when Riley's heard of it, that's super cool. And what's happening 
when you understand that this heart, when the heart is open, you can actually expand your heart and expand your level of healing, expand your level of influence. And, and this electromagnetic field can get wider and wider and bigger and bigger. In certain people, they say the Taurus field is about three to six feet wide for the average person. But also some signs suggest that in certain people, such as the Dalai Lama and other people that have been studied in such ways, it can expand up to uh, some say kilometers wide. So don't underestimate the power of a fully open, unlocked heart. So let's just um, uh, establish that first, the Taurus field. So I want to do uh, something that I teach at the events. And many people have asked me over many, many years, hang on, okay, so I get that I'm made up of more than flesh and bone. There's some sort of consciousness, some sort of intelligence. There's something more, a spirit, soul, whatever, within me that is who I am. And maybe I'm like having a human experience or something, but it's kind of, you know, you kind of understand it. You kind of intuitively know it. But then, then the question is, how how do you share it? So if someone has to, has to ask you, well, how, how do you have evidence for the fact that, you know, you're a, you're a magnetic field, that I'm a spirit soul, that I am consciousness? How can you explain to someone uh, how you are consciousness and what you believe about it? And let me, let me share this with you because it's such a cool thing. Uh, Einstein once said that if you cannot explain something simply, you don't understand it fully. And I think this is such a, a really good point uh, because we're going to talk about something now that has always been and will always be this unified field of divine consciousness. The scientists call it the unified field um, that exists within all of us. And in fact, now, if you look at science, and this is cool, you might want to write this down. Uh, the founder of quantum theory, Max Planck, P-L-A-N-C-K, Max Planck, won a Nobel Prize for this thing that I'm about to share with you right now. Uh, and this was over 100 years ago. So let's let's establish some facts. Over 100 years ago, a scientist wins a Nobel Prize for studying the conversation that we're having right now. He's talking about the quantum field, talking about intelligence, talking about what we're made up of and, and how the quantum field works. Okay, he wins a Nobel Prize. Then physicians, researchers have been able, uh, have been trialing and testing this theory trying to break this theory continuously for over a hundred years still stands true today it stands the test of time today so what does then science say about the nature of reality what does then science say about who and what we really are well let me give you an example and this is how you could explain it to someone if you wanted to 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 take something as powerful as the quantum field call it ether, call it source, call it consciousness, call it universe, call it intelligence, call it the divine, call it the mystical, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? How could you explain that in the limited knowledge that we have as human beings compared, compared to the, the great intelligence that is, right? The creator, if you will. This is one of the ways where you can explain consciousness from a scientific perspective. Uh, you can explain consciousness from a simple uh, perspective. Okay, you ready? All right, feel free to, to uh, enjoy this. Take notes, write it down, comment in the chat section. Let us know if you have any questions. So cool to see so many people watching. It's always a privilege. Okay, let's say, and here's, here's the example. Let's say that you take your hand. Okay, so if everyone can do this, take your hand, have a look at your hand. You can clearly see that your hand is made up of skin on the outside. You know, there's muscles on the inside. There's bones and ligaments and tendons, and, you know, blood vessels and nerves, etc. Okay, so this is, call it, um, when we look at the 13 dimensions, we call this the third dimension of height, width, and depth, which is effectively the materialistic world, matter, things that can be touched and felt, okay? So in this conversation, we're talking about anything that is physical in nature, but just to keep it simple, we're going to take your hand, it could be your brain, your heart, your liver, it could be anything, but we're going to take your hand as an example, okay? So you take your hand, have a look at your hand. Imagine now that you put your hand under a microscope, okay? So you put your hand under a microscope, and then you look in the microscope, and you're going to see a thing called a molecule. For those of you watching, just say yes or no. Have you heard of a molecule before? <clears throat> and I would imagine that most people have. Okay, so we see a molecule, and then we go deeper. The microscope is good, and we go deeper. We study, study deeper levels of, of human consciousness. So if I look at my hand, I'll first see skin. But then I go deeper and I'll see skin molecules. 
okay? <clears throat> and then I go deeper, and then I find atoms, okay? Have you heard of an atom before, an atom? Yeah, most people have. And what's the thing called that's in the middle of the atom? That's right, many of you know what that's called. If you've done a little bit of study, it's called a nucleus. That's at the center of, of the atom, if you will. So if we then put your hand, your heart, your brain, anything physical under a microscope, we see a molecule, we see an atom, we see a nucleus, and we keep going deeper and we see what's called subnuclear or lower than, smaller than the nucleus, subnuclear levels, okay? Here's the key. When we put your body under a microscope and the microscope is good enough and we go deeper, we're going to find when we get to the bottom, when we really see what you're fully made up of, we're going to see that you're actually made up of 99.9% .9 pure space. This is where the mic drops because many people in that point will go, oh, yeah, that makes so much sense. I knew there was more to me than just flesh and bone. But others may say, what do you mean? Look at me. This is all flesh and bone. This is all physical. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is an electromagnetic field that is holding together the different parts of atoms, molecules, and anything physical in nature. It's not actually as physical as you may think. You are actually more like a, a wave than a particle. You're actually more energy, consciousness, pure untapped intelligence, more than you are physical. So I like to say that I'm a, in this world, but not of this world. Can you resonate with this content? So when I ask my students, and we have tens of thousands of students now in the live room, I say, raise your hand if one, you believe that you're only physical, or two, if you believe that there's more to you, perhaps a spirit or a soul, and that perhaps that's who you are, maybe having a physical experience. And 99.9% .9 of our students, they raise their hand and they believe that there's more to them. What do you believe about you? Do you believe that you're limited to the three-dimensional world only? That you're only physical, that your children, the people that you love are only physical and that's it? Or do you believe that there, there, is a, there is intelligence, there is a field of intelligence in there, there is a spirit, soul, consciousness, something higher, something above or expansive to the third dimension? Okay, and I can see people in the comment section just, you know, obviously enjoying the fact that, well, we're more than physical. Okay, so this is how you can establish it. But most people though don't know this. Think about this: ninety-nine point nine and eight nines. Okay, that's how much we're made up of pure untapped potential. This space that is not physical, that has a vibration, energy frequency, that has coherence, that has electromagnetic properties that holds these cells together that make up our body. The, this field of intelligence that the scientists call the unified field, you may call it God, the greater organized design. You may call it spirit, the great spirit. You may call it creator, you may call it source. You may call it um, the universe. You may call it energy. Or if you just want to keep it scientific, call it the quantum field or the unified field. If you want to keep it super, um, super um, left brain, okay? Masculine, intellectual understanding, so on and so forth. So firstly, ladies and gentlemen, we, we've now established a scientific fact that we're made up of 99.9% .9 pure untapped potential. This is why our events is specifically tailored to helping you turn the attention back within, to actually look at the emotions, the thoughts, the, the blockages, the habits, the traumas, the limiting beliefs, and all the things inside of your body, all the things inside of your mind, all of those emotions, the issues in the tissues that is stopping you from elevating your consciousness, from raising your energy frequency and vibration, from opening your heart, from actually tapping in to the limitless potential that you actually are made up of. And there are enough people in the world that have a vested interest in keeping you stuck in the past. Because people that are free are extremely difficult to control. And so within this conversation, it brings with a tremendous opportunity, but it also brings tremendous responsibility because now that you're beginning to discover that there's more to you than 
physical things. Now that you're beginning to actually learn the number one law of the 12 universal laws, which is the law of oneness, the law of interconnectedness, hence the scientific name, the unified field, the unified field, that all is one, that all is of source. And yet, though, you are a different, unique expression of source compared to me. However, even though I see you as something separate with my eyes and and feel you as something separate with my hands, science has proven for over 100 years, trial and tested, we know intuitively within our minds and hearts that we are connected. And that connection, well, that is more than 99% of who we are. So the illusion, you might want to write this one down, the illusion of separation will sooner or later become clear. You will see how we have been conditioned and or lost our ways to perceive, believe, and therefore achieve the person on the street that we walk past as begging for a dollar is not us. That the people in third world countries or people that can't help themselves, that we believe that they're not a part of us. The truth of the matter is, again, scientifically proven that everything in our reality, everything that you experience on a day-to-day basis, every people, every person around you, every circumstance that you have, every experience that you have in your life is a direct reflection of your own consciousness. And it's almost like the higher self is trying to teach you where to look, what to do and how to see. So my question then is, how would you respond if that was you? How could we come together as a family and respond if we knew that everything around us was us? This is so powerful, Dr. E, and I hope everyone's writing notes down because once this notion is really comprehended and not just understood intellectually, but applied to life and applied into the embodiment of the experience, then it can be applied to all areas of life. And this is what Dr. E definitely teaches, particularly whether it's in finances and wealth, and we really tap into the abundance once the energy is in flow or in relationships. And I've learned this from um, doing the work with Dr. E at the QA and also attending the retreats and it's powerful, powerful stuff. But again, it takes practice and diligence and repetition, ongoing, doing the work. And so, Dr. E, I'm curious to hear a little bit more on this topic, particularly if people do start to realize their full potential and recognize that they're a part of this energetic unified field, what is it that ultimately holds most people back? And what are the biggest challenges that you observe in in doing this work consistently? And then, you know, how do people break through that? Wow, what a question. Actually, Ro, this reminds me of uh, a conversation that I had with a friend of mine the other day. Uh, he's a consultant for the company and also a good friend of mine. And he said, I just referred uh, a family uh, to your events. I said, thank you so much. And I said, um, why and, and, and what did you say? And he, he tilted his head and he thought for a minute and he said, I just told him the truth. I said that we all experience a range of emotions and unfortunately we are conditioned in the unconscious mind in the body and also in the conscious mind to repeat a number of emotions um primarily those of a lower frequency those issues in the tissues those wounded emotions of the ego of the past and we repeat them on autopilot because they come from the childhood period you know the what we call the the imprint period of childhood and human psychology, age one to seven. And the traumas that we had as children, they created emotions. And now these emotions are coming up every day because we haven't actually dealt with them. It's like a program on your computer that hasn't been updated. It slows everything down. So my friend said the other day, he said, I just told him the truth. I said, you need to come to to Espen's event because instead of having these lower frequency dangerous, self-sabotaging, unconscious emotions run your life, jeopardizing your relationships, your wealth, your health, all this sort of stuff. Instead of having that happen and going to psychologists or you know other seminars or different things for decades, 
you actually get into a three-day event where Espen will take you into fear, into your greatest fear, and turn that fear to love, fear to fuel. You're held in both a sacred and scientific space where this is done specifically. Um, after we've collapsed your greatest fear, which on the Hawkins scale of consciousness vibrates at 100 hertz comparatively to love, which is 528 hertz, we do first we collapse your greatest fear, then we collapse your guilt. Guilt's at 30 hertz. Remember, zero hertz is death. Zero vibrational cycles per second is death. 30 is the second lowest emotion ever measured. Everyone experiences guilt and most of us profound amounts of it. And it is literally making us sick on a daily basis. After we've collapsed fear and guilt, we get into shame. Shame is the lowest vibration on the Hawkins scale at 20 hertz. Okay. And that's the first day. Every time we celebrate and we bring fear to love, guilt to love, shame to love, etc. Second day, we deal with grief, sadness, and anger. We collapse and heal, pull out the splinter of grief, sadness, and anger. Because if you're angry, you're actually sad. It's a disguise for it. That's opening the heart. Then we come to the throat. And now we deal with lies. And not just the lies that we tell ourselves and the lies that we tell other people, but the lives. The lives that we live. The lives of inauthenticity and incongruency where you're living a life that you shouldn't be living you're thinking that you're needing to do this or be that and you're living someone else's life normally a projection of the value systems of those who helped you grow up as a child thinking that i need to be this way to please them to get love the greatest uh, regret of thousands of people dying is i wish i had the courage to live a life true to me and not the life that other people expected of me. So when we get to the throat, when we get to the lies, we help each person actually let go of the things that they shouldn't be doing. Step into your truth and live your life according to your value system, your spirit, your soul, your desires, your dreams. And when you do that, you don't need any motivation anymore. You don't need an external push because you have an internal pull. That's the difference. It's magnetic. It draws you in. It takes no energy. It gives you energy. That's the difference. When you live a life of inspiration, limitless energy. The number one asset, number one resource is energy. Then we come to the third eye. That's when we deal with the illusion of separation. And we do, we do so by uh, going through a very powerful experience where we actually get to dream stream our entire life and plan our entire life from the aspect of the higher self. What if I could live the life that I wanted to live, my dream life, my life by conscious design instead of a life by continuous unconscious default. So we deal with that illusion. We'll let that go. And then we come back the third day, and then we deal with the, the main blockages, the main blockages that stops us from connecting to source consciousness, which is, of course, disconnection. It's disconnection from what is and an addiction to what is actually not. It's our addictions to the three-dimensional world, our addictions to materialism, our addictions to the way we are perceived by people, our addictions to what we have instead of who we are. So when we let go of the addictions and the attachments that are holding us back, we're free to ascend. And that means connect our awareness, the lower self, connected with the higher self, anchored in the heart it's metaphorically bringing heaven on earth so my friend said it so beautifully um, the quality of our life is the quality of the emotions that we feel the majority of the time you can spend years decades trying to deal with the unconscious deep seated emotions the traumas of the past and childhood work it out as you go along or you could say i'm going to take this on head first and i'm going to sit in a sacred scientific space for three days and i'm going to go into this consciously from the aspect of awareness from the aspect of love and i'm going to do the work consciously now because my life matters and, and apparently the two people that he said it to were just like yeah yeah we're there we had something on but we're going to cancel but it's not for everyone you see um sitting in this space facing your fear is not easy like bruce lee said it is the thing that will set you free but not everyone deep down wants to be free and not everyone deep down 
has has decided that they're willing to do the work. This is absolutely huge, guys, particularly in that last piece, making the decision to move forward with courage to improve your life. It's, you know, one decision that no one can make for you, only we can make it for ourselves. And that that piece that Espen mentioned at the very beginning, the level of self-responsibility that it requires to move forward in this decision-making process is tremendous and challenging, yes, but ultimately extremely rewarding as well. And that's where I feel true freedom comes from. When we were able to, as Espen said, in the work that they do, let go of all of the, the baggage and the burdens and the emotions that are holding us back from stepping into our, our true potential, stepping into that Taurus energy field um, you spoke of. So I want to thank you, Dr. Espen, so much for all the work that you do in the world, um, all the people that you inspire to live in spirit. And you guys, if you're watching this and you haven't done the QA yet, I highly recommend going and checking it out. Go to drespen.com. And if you want more videos like this, make more great conscious content from Dr. Espen and many more people who also share another perspective on this area, on health, on life, on wealth, on science and on spirituality, go check out Dr. ETV, which is a part of a full library of conscious content and media online on Earth Heroes TV. So I really want to thank you, Dr. E, for um, you know your contributions to the world that we find ourselves in. Uh, particularly now when things seem most challenging, that there is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. I, um, I have a belief that uh, drives incredible, um, uh, an incredible mission, incredible value. And as we know what we believe we will achieve. So I'll end on this note. My belief is really simple. I believe that right now we're going through the great awakening of humanity. There's going to be a, a, what I call this splitting prism of time, prism with an M. Uh, one, uh, will be the old way and one will be the new way. One will be the ways of the past and one will be a new conscious future. One will be fear, one will be love. Uh, one will be darkness, one will be light. Uh, and there is, of course, no right or wrong answer. And in fact, they are both one in essence. But as a part of the human experience, we're going to have to make a choice. You watching and listening right now, you're going to have to make a choice at some point. Do you stand with the old ways? Do you stagnate where you used to be in the old ways? Or do you evolve into the light? Uh, because as we're seeing, the energetic, uh, the bioresonance and the frequency of the planet is, in, is increasing. The amount of light, photons, particles, sunspots, um, and Schumann resonant waves that are coming through our galaxy onto this planet, the amount of human evolution that we're seeing in a rapid rate is unstoppable. Either way, we descend or we ascend. And if you make that conscious choice to walk the path of love, the path of awakening, the path of freedom, the path of unity within that unified field, you'll be getting closer and closer to the fundamental truth of who you are, the scientifically proven fact of what you're made of. And you will be eventually with an open heart, completely unstoppable. So as I say, what if the top is just at the bottom of your potential. What if joining a, a conscious community of inspired people coming together to create that change, to walk that path, could be a way for you to also be embraced within this evolution of humanity. Um, so it's an exciting time to be alive. The coolest thing is that free will is ours. We choose which path we take. And if all you do today is to speak the words and to declare to yourself which path you walk and just try your best every day to send love to everything and everyone. You are already becoming the hero that you've been waiting for. So see you at the events when you're ready to take that step and to walk that path. In the meantime, love you lots and see you soon.